Hello and welcome back. My playthrough of the F1 1995 season on the original Formula 1 game for PlayStation as Jean Alesi is finally coming to an end. So this is the perfect time to finish my Alesi trilogy. In part one, I looked at his rise from F3000 to F1 and how he ended up at Ferrari, plus a few of his best wet weather drives as well. In part two, I looked at the story of his one win in Formula 1, the 1995 Canadian Grand Prix. And in this part three, I'm going to look at the end of his time at Ferrari all the way through to the end of his F1 career in a video I'm somewhat harshly calling The Fall of Jean Lacy. My name's Ash. This is The Outside Line. Ever since the day Jean Lacy finally won his first Formula One race at the 1995 Canadian Grand Prix, rumours have been circulating that reigning world champion Michael Schumacher was in talks to sign for Ferrari and take his place. At the 1995 Hungarian Grand Prix, those rumours became fact, and Jean Lacy was out of a drive. Fortunately, Benetton team boss Flavio Briatore had been in contact with Alesi beforehand and hinted the Schumacher move was happening. Briatore told Alesi, if it happens, please look at us, and Alesi thought, why not? And so the deal was done, Alesi and Schumacher effectively swapped seats. In a further twist, Alesi's longtime Ferrari teammate Gerhard Berger, not keen to partner Schumacher, would follow Alesi to his new team. This would have been an emotional time for Alesi, you know, he had a strong connection with the Ferrari and the Tifosi, and despite the fact he had not delivered the success that everyone had hoped or expected he would, there was still a mutual love and respect there. He would leave Ferrari with the one pole position, the 1994 Italian Grand Prix, and one win, the aforementioned 95 Canadian Grand Prix. It was typical of Alesi's look that he would be leaving the Scuderia just as they seemed to be getting their shit together. Even more typical that even though he was joining the reigning Constructors Champions, Chief Designer Rory Byrne had taken a season out, and several other key personnel had followed Schumacher to Ferrari. But Benetton still had a good package, and master strategist Ross Braun was still there pulling the strings. So there was plenty to be optimistic about for 1996. Unfortunately, it wasn't the best start. At round one in Australia, Alesi qualified sixth behind both Ferraris and collided with the Ferrari of Eddie Irvine just nine laps in, retiring from the race. Fortunately, a characteristically great wet weather performance in Brazil saw him climb from fifth to second, grabbing his first podium for the team, followed by a solid third place in Argentina behind the two dominant Williams cars of Hill and Villeneuve, with a fastest lap to boot. However, round four at the Nürburgring saw Alesi's first conflict with team boss Briatore, after a poor start followed by a collision with Mika Salo early on, saw him retire. Both he and Berger were called to Daddy Flavio's office for a little telling off. No more errors, they were allegedly told. After grabbing a single point at San Marino, maybe Monaco would be the race to kickstart Jean's season. After a promising third in qualifying, he was swiftly promoted to second after Schumacher made an uncharacteristic error was his Ferrari in the wall. But these wet to dry conditions, while tricky, were what Jean thrived in. A dominant Hill who'd won four of the opening five races was often clear, with Alesi a comfortable second. This slightly underplays the chaos of what was going on behind them as cars dropped out of the race like flies. Then it happened to Hill. A blown engine gifted Jean Alesi the lead at Monaco. Finally, the typically unlucky French Sicilian was getting lucky until he immediately got unlucky again. With 15 laps to go, Alesi had a suspension failure, and the bad luck that had played him throughout his time at Ferrari was officially renewed at Benetton. Oh goody. In the next round at Spain, the heavens opened again, and while many succumbed to the conditions, Alesi drove brilliantly to finish second. However, a slight damper, in addition to the massive amounts of rain that was falling, was that Michael Schumacher won the race by 45 seconds, earning him the title of Rainmaster and marking his first victory for Ferrari after just six attempts. In contrast, Alesi's first and only victory for Ferrari came after 68 races. Ouch. Speaking of ouch, that brings me to the Italian Grand Prix, a race that had seen heartbreak for Alesi the past two seasons driving for Ferrari, with his car breaking down two years on the trot while he was comfortably leading. This year there was less expectation with him starting sixth on the grid, but got an amazing start and incredibly took the lead. But just a few corners later at the Lesmos he ran wide, lost momentum and dropped a second. However on lap 6 a tyre stack would catch out Damon Hill, meaning Lacey would re-inherit the lead, with Schumacher chasing. 
Alesi seemed to be holding Schumacher, but Ferrari used the pit stops on lap 30 to get Schumacher ahead, and from there on the fresh tyres, the German controlled proceedings. Alesi would come home second to Schumacher, who won for Ferrari at Monza on the first attempt. Double ouch. All things considered, Alesi had a pretty decent season overall, despite the fact that history kind of sees 1996 as a failure for Benetton. And that is understandable, as they'd gone from being Constructors champions to having their first winless season since 1988. But Alesi's consistency was undeniable. Of the 11 races he successfully finished, he scored points in every single one of them, and 8 of those were podiums, leading him to his best finish in the Drivers' Championship of his career. Now think about this, if his suspension hadn't failed in Monaco, and his rear brakes hadn't overheated in Silverstone where he was running 3rd, and potentially in the frame for 2nd, he actually would have finished ahead of Schumacher in the Drivers' Championship. I know, I know, and if a triangle had four sides, it would be a square, and if a Lacey's car had two wheels, it would be a motorbike, but you get my point. Man's unlucky. 1997 brought more bad news for Benetton. Among others, Ross Braun and chief designer Rory Byrne also left to join Schumacher at Ferrari. But don't worry, Benetton had now got Nick Worth as their chief designer, whose previous accolades include being the founder, owner, and technical director of Simtech, who failed to score a single point in the 1.25 seasons they raced in. Oh dear. And the season did not start well. Alesi qualified 8th and Berger 10th, both over 3 seconds off the pace in Australia. In the race, Alesi had gotten into the points thanks to Irvine, Herbert and Villeneuve's first lap incident, and he was trying to chase down Mika Hakkinen. But unbeknownst to him, his radio had broken, and his team were trying to call him in for fuel. They put out pit boards, but Alesi didn't see them, and on lap 34, he ran out of fuel. Alesi was apologetic, Daddy Flavio was furious. While the B197 unfortunately was not the step forward with the team wanted, it wasn't a massive step back either. Reliability was much better, but they weren't as quick nor as consistent with their pace as the year before. Alesi though again managed to regularly get in the points, scoring in 7 of the next 11 races, including one third place and two second places at Canada and Britain. Then came the never-ending source of pain to Alesi, that is, the Italian Grand Prix. Alesi had managed to grab the second and last pole position of his career, his second at the Italian Grand Prix too, and despite the fact Alesi was no longer a Ferrari driver, the fans went mad. He was still one of theirs deep down. Unfortunately, a similar pattern to the 96 event would follow on race day. Alesi led the first 31 laps, lost the lead in the pit stops due to David Coulthard having a quicker stop, and would never regain it another second place at Monza, this time behind Coulthard. Alesi would finish second again at the Luxembourg Grand Prix and subsequently end the season level on points with David Coulthard, the Scots two wins putting him ahead of Alesi in the standings. While Alesi's fourth place technically matches his best position from the season before, it was helped by the fact that Michael Schumacher was disqualified from the championship for hitting the wrong part of Jacques Villeneuve at the season closer in Jerez. The end of the season saw big change for Alesi. Relations with Daddy Flavio had broken down, and he was ready to move on. The retirement of Gerhard Berger also saw the end of one of the longest partnerships in F1, the pair starting 77 Grand Prix as teammates at Ferrari and Benetton. For 1998, Alesi slightly rekindled his Ferrari connection by joining Sauber, who were powered by a 1997 spec Ferrari V10. While he was no longer at the sharp end of the grid, Alesi still performed admirably. In fact, he called his time at Sauber a reset of my Formula 1 life. It took him just three races to score points for his new team, grabbing fifth in Argentina. And thanks to a rain-affected qualifying, he took Sauber's first ever front row qualification with second in Austria but his best result of the season was yet to come, at the infamous 1998 Belgian Grand Prix, with heavy rain and that first lap crash, he again managed the treacherous conditions to come home third behind the two Jordans. He would score once more that season, continuing his love-hate relationship with Monza, grabbing fifth place. Unfortunately, the 1999 Sauber was a definitive step backwards, plagued with the reliability issues, especially with its transmission. This saw Alesi retire from seven of the first nine races. Although again, he showed he still had pace in him. At the Brazilian Grand Prix, from 14th on the grid, he cut through the pack up to fifth and set the fastest lap before a gearbox issue ended his race. 
thanks to another wet qualifying session at Manicor, he managed another second place on the grid and two solitary points at Imola and Suzuka, his teammate Pedro Diniz finishing one point ahead of him in the standings. Unfortunately, the sound relationship kind of went sour fast. The Lacey felt that the engineers weren't listening to driver's feedback or developing the car enough. So after the Hungarian Grand Prix, he said he would be leaving Sauber at the end of the season. There was brief speculation that Lacey might replace Eddie Irvine alongside Schumacher at Ferrari, which could you imagine that would have been amazing to see. Schumacher was even in favour of it, speaking of his approval of Alessi at a press conference. However, Ferrari went for Rubens Barrichello, and Alessi chose to drive for his former Ferrari teammate, Alain Prost. However, Prost Grand Prix had been having a pretty rough time of it since switching to Peugeot engines and their own car design, rather than an evolution of the Ligier, which they'd replaced, and 2000 was, was not an improvement. Alessi retired from 12 of the 17 races. 12 out of 7, he finished 5 races, that's it. And the team also went through a total of 54 Peugeot V10s. I mean, imagine the grid penalties they'd face if that was in the modern Formula 1 era. Not only would they be starting at the back of the grid, they'd be starting the race 3 weeks after it ended. Alessi's best finish was 9th at the Nürburgring, and for the first time in his career he would endure a season without scoring points. Prost would finish 11th and last in the Constructors' standings. As ever though, Alessi continued to show he still had it, notably at the Belgian Grand Prix where, after qualifying 17th, he once again mastered wet to dry conditions to get himself up to 4th and stay there for most of the race. Naturally, as is always the way with Jean, reliability ended his race early. A fuel pressure issue, just 12 laps from home. 2001 was a notable step forward for Prost, they had ditched Peugeot engines for Acer and reliability was massively improved, so much so that Alessi had no retirements in the first 11 rounds of the championship. He even managed three points finishes in Monaco, Canada and Germany. However, after the German Grand Prix, he would not drive for Prost again. Four days before his home race, Heinz Harald Frentzen was fired by Jordan for poor performances, so this gave Jean Alessi an opportunity to drive for the man who had helped him to his F3000 title and had been instrumental in getting him that first F1 drive with Tyrrell. He had a chance to drive for Eddie Jordan. So, for the last five rounds of the season, Frentzen and Alessi would swap places. Alessi even managed to score a point in his second race for the team, with sixth at Spa. Eddie Jordan told Alessi that there might be a place in the team for 2002, but Alessi knew this was unlikely. In the end, Jordan went with Giancarlo Fisichella and Takuma Sato, and Alessi we we'll call it a day. Now it's unfair to say that Alessi's story with motorsports stops there because it just doesn't. He drove another series, he drove at Le Mans, he drove the Indy 500 and he had ambassador roles with Lotus and Pirelli. And of course there's his son Giuliano Alessi who he's supporting on his own motorsports journey. Don't mention the F40, don't mention the F40, don't mention him selling the F40, you better not mention the F40, don't mention it, don't mention it, don't mention it, don't mention it, just don't mention it, don't mention it. But I'm going to end the story here because in Alessi's own words, leaving F1 was the worst day of his life and he missed everything about it because for 13 years it was his entire life. Before starting my F195 season as Jean and doing these videos in his career I liked him but now at the end I'm a full-blown fan. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go check out my other motorsport shorts. And if it sounds like it's up your street, go check out my playthrough of the F195 season as Mr. Jean Alacy. The full season will probably pretty much be up by now. So go check it out. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully I will see you for another video very soon. Also, sorry for my nose in this. Hay fever has kicked me in the well, face.